today I will share with you my methodology on breakcore metal. Most of you wanted this tutorial to be uncut, but I honestly couldn't have structured all the information to be easily digestible. Because of that, this video will be edited. However, I will be releasing a full uncut video of making a breakcore metal drag from scratch. So, you know. Breakcore metal sound is not that hard to achieve honestly, it's just aiming bricks and an electric guitar. The main challenge is to write a coherent melody that would rhythmically make sense in both breakcore and metal. You see, rhythmic structure of metal is not complicated at all most of the times. You can get away with having your kick on the strong beats and the snare on the off beats for the entire song. Meanwhile breakcore is just... So you are kind of forced to compromise, but this isn't that hard either. Just don't get discouraged if it doesn't have that metal or that break or a vibe to it. Cause it's odd. Okay, it's, it's just however break or metal is kinda underdeveloped right now. And also metal has like 10,000 subgenres. So you can do whatever you want. You can express yourself however you wish. And that's a major selling point. So with that out of the way. There is an opinion that breakcore drums should only be chopped in the playlist as a sample. This is a valid opinion, however there are some benefits to samplers that make the process a lot more convenient. And because of that I mainly use Slicex, a stock FL Studio plugin. First of all, add Slicex and just drag your break into it. You can also right click the sample and press open in new Slicex channel. It will usually break the sample into regions automatically. But if it did not do that or did a poor job slicing it, you can do it yourself. Delete all or some markers if you want. Double click the point where you want your marker to be and press this button and add marker. Alternatively, you can just press M on your keyboard. It is a good practice to separate out your kicks, snares and cymbals because it will allow you to sidechain and process each drum piece individually. To do that, select the first marker here and Press the play button to hear what drum piece is being played at that marker. Then increase or decrease the out to offset this marker's routing on the mixer. I like to put all the kicks one channel to the right, snares two channels to the right and leaving cymbals as is. Put the slicex on the mixer, unroute kicks, snares and cymbals from the master channel and route them all to another channel. This channel is the drum bus channel. This routing will allow us to master drums easily. As you can see, our break is divided into many different regions in the piano roll. You can also control the volume and the pitch of each note right here. There are two methods. Recording a real guitar and using a VST guitar simulator. It is better if you can record it and if you can I can guarantee you that you already know how so in this video I won't touch on that. VST guitar simulator is perfect for people that don't have the opportunity or those who are just lazy like me. I forgot to mention that there is actually another approach to this. You can just not use the guitar at all. For example here I have a simple serum synth. It is just a bunch of waves, noise and a sub bass, a little bit of envelope here and there. This goes through a distortion and then it goes to a VST guitar amp. I will touch on this a little bit later. And it sounds like this. I think you can get away with that. At least Mick Gordon did. <laughs> For my VST guitar I use Ample Metal Hellraiser. You can honestly use it as is but I would insist on you turning off its default amp and effects because we are going to process it ourselves which will turn out a lot better. To do that follow this next clip.
Hellraiser has three playing modes changed by this button. Instrument mode won't allow you to play things that would be impossible on a real guitar. Keyboard mode has no restrictions and allows you to play whatever you want. Solo mode restricts you to one voice and doesn't allow you to play two notes at a time. I mainly use keyboard mode, but I would advise for you to not dismiss other modes. There's some piece of information that isn't obvious to those who don't have a lot of experience with recording guitars. It is actually recorded in mono. <laughs> What people usually do is they record their part a second time and pan one sample to the left and one to the right. It is called doubling and it makes the guitar sound not awful in the mix. Listen for yourself. Hellraiser has built-in doubling. To turn it on, press this button. This knob controls how offset is the second channel. Do not overdo it. I usually have it around 20 or 25. There are also sliders to control fret sound volume and release. If you don't really need it to be realistic, you can turn both to zero. The FX slider controls these sounds. For my amp I use Archetype Gojira. It sounds great, it has a lot of built-in presets and it allows you to design some very disgusting and heavy tones. Let's go through this plugin's pedals. First of all we have a pitch shift pedal, then we have this. And I will not say what it's called because when I say it it sounds funny because of my accent. Then we have a bunch of overdrives, a phaser and a chorus, and the amp itself. It also has a built-in EQ, and also there is a delay and a reverb. I would like to focus your attention on the pitch shifter because, well not because it's necessary, but because it's honestly so cool. First of all, let's turn it on and turn this knob all the way to the wet. Then we will wiggle this pedal for a bit, then press tools, last tweaked, and create automation clip. This is an automation clip that is tied to this pedal. Now let's write a little melody or something. So we have that. Remember this automation clip? It is currently turned all the way down, which corresponds to one octave downshift. We don't want that right now, so we will type in value and type in exactly 0.5. We'll copy this value and paste it over here. Then we will drag our melody to the timeline and do a bit of automation. Okay, we got that, and this is how this melody sounds without a automated pitch shift. And this is how it sounds with the automated pitch shift. One other thing that we have to do when we load Archetype Gajira is to turn this from mono to stereo. We should do it because we have a built-in doubler in Ample Metal Hellraiser. So the signal that comes in the amp is stereo. I encourage you to experiment a lot with these pedals and every single setting in this plugin because it is capable of producing some really cool guitar tones. Ample Metal Hellraiser also can play palm mutes and harmonics. If a note is played at a low velocity, it will be a palm mute. And if it is played at a maximum velocity, it will be a harmonic. Let's add a couple of harmonics and palm mutes to our melody. Also, if your guitar tone is very distorted like this one, you don't really want to be building huge chords. They do sound not bad, actually, but they are very hard to mix. If you want to play huge chords with the guitar and also keep the distortion, you can just head to your amp and decrease the gain a little bit. And that'll do the trick. So this is basically all we need to know about Ample Metal Hellraiser to start out.
For base, you can honestly use anything you want. If you're feeling yourself, you can get a VST base simulator and process it. But I usually use something out of Serum. So I have a little project with everything set up. And by the way, don't mind the project name. Let's give it a listen and then I will tell you how it's mixed. Let's start with drums. They are set up in a way that I described in the second part of this video. So kicks go to one channel, snares go to another channel, and cymbals go to their channel. They all are unrouted from the master channel and routed to a drum bus channel, which is then routed to a master channel. The processing is very simple, it's just a little bit of compression and a little bit of EQ on both snares and kicks. Cymbals are basically not processed at all, and the drum bus channel has an EQ to cut a little bit of high amp. Then the guitar. It is basically an empty ample metal hellraiser that then goes through an amp, through an EQ, and through some reverb. Fruity fast LP is a low pass that I automated to make this part. For bass I used a contact library that is called Eurobase 3. It is also basically not processed at all. I just removed some removed some mids. This does look pretty ugly, but well, it basically is. Then I have a piano. For piano, I used Quiet Piano. It is a free VST plugin. It sounds great, but I don't find it very convenient to use. I know other people do, but I don't. And there is an instance of Addictive Drums 2 that I loaded just to use the crashes. You might have noticed fruity peak controllers on kicks and snares. I used them for sidechain. The mixing is very simple, but for some reason I really can't get the hang of it. It is still challenging for me, but I'm sure that it will be easier for you. So this is basically all you need to know to employ my methodology on breakwire metal. And I should remind you that this is my methodology, and my methods may be... well, they probably are wrong. Because of that, I encourage you to conduct some experimentation. In fact, a lot of experimentation and also trying to learn from different sources. And if you find some more trustworthy source than me, then send me the link, please. If I have missed something, please let me know. If you have any questions, I will answer them. I am also very curious about what you guys will produce with the information from this tutorial, so if you can, please tag me on your demos or just send them to my email. Also, I'm sorry for the microphone's quality and for the quality of editing of this video. It is my first time editing a video as big as a tutorial, so I'm sure I've gotten something wrong. <laughs> and I guess that's all.